I've had a few questions about my Holly Sniper EFI installation on my Fairlane. I installed this system just before I was starting out on YouTube, so I didn't film any of the installation process, which I think a number of people have been interested in seeing. I thought I might do a bit of an overview of the system and how I installed it in my Fairlane. When I first rebuilt this car, in about 2007, I had a very specific vision and a part of that vision included it was always going to stay a six-cylinder. Most Aussies who have a fair lane with a six-cylinder in them or even a Falcon with a six-cylinder in them, typical thing to do is to install a V8. I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to stick with the inline six arrangement, the original 3.6 litre or 221 straight six was a little bit underpowered for this size of car but there was a variant of the 250 that came out a couple of years after this called the 252 v these are a very sought after engine because they made pretty good horsepower so the standard 250 with its one barrel carby was a 150 horsepower engine the 252 v with its um, WW2 carburetor was a 170 horsepower engine. With a little bit of modification work, I was able to get that engine to produce 200 horsepower. I won't go into all the modifications I did on that engine. What I will say is that a big part of that power came from my carburetor setup, which was a set of three two barrel DCOE Weber 45 carburetors. My main reason for going from the triple Weber setup to the fuel injection setup was simply drivability. When I built this car back in 2007, I was probably a bit of a different person then, more interested in performance, quite happy to tinker daily. Over the last few years, as I've gotten a little bit older i've started to value being able to get in my car and just drive it you know get stuck in traffic for an hour and a half without having to pull over somewhere and change my spare set of spark plugs anybody who's had webers would probably know this long idle periods <laughs> something to avoid um if you don't want foul spark plugs it's a common thing unless you've got your weber carburetors tuned to absolute perfection which I didn't. So I'll talk you through some of the modifications I had to make. So original fuel line delivering fuel to this engine was a 5 16 fuel line. The Holly Sniper requires a 3 8 fuel line to be installed. I had to change the fuel sender unit and pick up here to a 3 8 unit, which is easy enough to get. This is the standard fit for V8 versions of the Fairlane and probably the Falcon 2. Original fuel pickup line came out right here, basically where the current line is coming in to the fuel filter. So I'm at, I made up a little fuel line that comes up here and redirects the fuel into the inlet of the fuel pump. Now, the Holly Sniper EFI system does call for a pre and a post filter on the fuel pump. I originally did install the pre filter and I had some problems with the pump cavitating. As a result of that, I opted for removing the pre filter and instead installed a Holly fuel mat, which I was able to install through this hole here. So a bit of a modification to the actual fuel sender and that Holly fuel mat now sits, lays in the bottom of the fuel tank there. It acts both as a fuel filter, but it also removes any aeration that's coming into the fuel line, which I was also getting with the pre-filter installed. The Fairlane has a very large and wide tank. There's a lot of fuel sloshing around moving around when you go around corners when you accelerate and decelerate and all of that so the 
Holly Fuel Mat, which wasn't cheap at all, was a very good piece of hardware in order to bring that cavitation back under control. My wiring for the fuel pump just comes straight through the rubber grommet uh, alongside of the fuel sender wire. Of course, the ground side just bolts straight back to the body of the car. I had to fabricate two new fuel lines, a return line and a new supply line because as I said before, the original supply line was 5 sixteenths and initially I thought I could get away with using the supply line as a return, but with such a long line with so many bends in it, it was definitely advantageous to make the return line uh, 3.8 as well as the supply line. Decades ago, this car used to have an LPG system installed and the fuel line came through that rubber grommet there so that became the perfect place for me to shoot the return line through so you can see here the return line from under the carpet that slot there in the carpet is for the filler neck inside there is a little plastic return feed line that hangs off of that okay around here this is the business end of the injection system you can see my fuel line coming into the fuel bowl here and then the return line which comes back out around here getting right down low in there you should be able to see the adapter plate this adapter plate converts the manifold to accept a holly two barrel carburetor in place of the original ww2 carburetor you can also see there that i've deleted the manifold heating system i've never run the engine coolant through the manifold on this car even before I had the Weber carburetors installed on here I never experienced any carburetor icing as a result of not running that the problem of course with not running a heated manifold is that I had nowhere to mount the temperature sensor I had a friend who's a machinist machine up this adapter block which inserts straight into the heater core supply line and gets the temperature from there this works well because i'm taking the temperature of the engine from before the thermostat another benefit of the holly system was that i was able to delete the original belt driven cooling fan and install a thermo fan which is switched by the holly ecu via this relay down there below the voltage regulator in terms of the neatness and tidiness of the wiring many people might criticize the fact that i haven't rewrapped the loom one day i might get around to it you can see that there the yellow wire that picks up from the ignition coil and gives the ecu a tachometer reading i don't connect the little touchscreen tuning thing to the car all the time I've left the cable here looped up with a couple of cable ties and dangling so I can either connect that touch screen and work on it under the engine bay or I can prod it through the grommet into the cabin and use it inside the car. The last thing that needed to be installed was the O2 sensor. In the documentation it asks you to install the O2 sensor only on one bank of cylinders being an inline engine, this exhaust system is a three into two into one, and I could have installed this a bit further upstream in the system where the three comes into two. So picture this, you haven't started your car for a month. The three fuel bowls are empty and a part of the fuel line is empty and you've got to pump that fuel up using the original mechanical pump, which of course runs off the camshaft. The only way to activate that pump is to crank the engine and you haven't started the engine for a month. So your battery's not been topped up on a daily basis like it would have in your daily driver car. You can imagine what your experience of starting that car is going to be. I haven't driven this car for over a month and let's see how we go with starting up. So it's just a case of turning the key.
waiting three or four seconds for the fuel pressure to build up. And there we go. Starting and idling perfectly. No choke, no pumping the throttle, no trying to coax it into life. The engine just wakes up and is ready to go, which is a major difference over the um, triple weather setup that I used to have. This installation did cost me around four and a half to five thousand dollars to complete, and that's with me doing all of the work myself, no labor costs added. Was it worth it? My response to that is absolutely. For the sake of being able to jump in my car, just drive it, there's definitely a loss of performance in the top end over the triple Weber setup. There's no doubt about that. Those Weber carburetors at the top end with fairly large cylinders to fill did provide a much better top end experience than what this system does. The general drivability where you spend 99% of your time driving is like chalk and cheese so much smoother anyway i've made this video for those people that are curious about my experience with the holly sniper system i've rambled on long enough about it till next time see you later